my name is Karen Fire and welcome back to Conan Exiles. Today we're going to be covering something very important and these are my favourite two best thrills I've found in the game that are not purge thrills. I've been testing a lot of thrills in a test that involves actually testing their damage and I have found these ones to be the best highest performing ones that will kill their target a lot quicker than any of the rest in the list. I have tested tons and tons of fighters, but these are my top ones, and I think you'll find that you'll have a very good time in Conan Exiles if you find them yourself. So we're going to be starting with Relic Hunter Treasure Seeker. Now this lady is really, really awesome. Um, she actually performs pretty well. The best out of all the Relic Hunter brands I've found, apart from Captain, but Captain doesn't spawn in the Conan Exiles world anymore, so if you have one, you're very lucky, because they are very, very good. But the Relic Hunter Treasure Seeker is great, she's also very easy to find because they're everywhere all over the Undead City, so I can show you that in a moment, but I really like these because they have nice agility, nice fatality, and nice accuracy, even though they're being a fighter, they make a pretty darn good archer, I'm not gonna lie. And they have pretty nice base HP pool, they're just a really nice roll overall. So if you're looking for the fighters, one of the best spots here in the Undead City is probably actually this place right here. The reason that is because nothing else will disturb you but these treasure seekers. And this area is right here on the map is just above the Red Mother near the spawning pools on this bridge. Quite a nice little location to get them. Another place to get these treasure seekers will be here. And last but not least here. But this area might be slightly more tricky than the rest of them because there is a lot of skeletons around. And here they are on the last location on the map. My next on the list in no particular order is the Sumerian Berserker. It is a very underestimated thrall. People don't really look at it, they overlook it a lot. But this is a very good fighter, especially when you give it something heavy, like a war axe or a sword. They do miles of damage, they are wonderful thralls, and they attack very fast. When I was using them to attack earlier, they were actually the quickest out of pretty much everybody to kill their target so these are an awesome thrall to have. They start off with quite a nice base uh, HP as well which is nice of their strength so they're a strength and vit thrall. Nice uh, forgotten tribe one and you can find them very easily. My next on this list to no surprise is Delincia Snow Hunter. Now this uh, thrall is absolutely amazing, uh, you probably hear everybody talk about her all the time but she is an amazing thrall the same. Quite easy to find, she's a front forgotten tribe again. She starts with an amazing base HP and she has great damage as well. She kills her targets quite fast. Do you want to know where Sumerian Berserkers are? One of the easiest places to find a Berserker is around the Mounds of the Dead camp. And there is always a spawner of a Sumerian Berserker that will literally do figure loops around this water area. Here walk, or it will be a she or a he will walk. One of the ways to distinguish what it is without getting too close is to see the it has a nice yellow bar around it. That's how you know it's a Sumerian Berserker. And you can knock it out. So we're literally looking here on the map. It will literally circle around. You see this tiny little dot here? It will circle around and around this kind of area. Another place you can find a Sumerian Berserker is up in this little camp overlooking the Forgotten Tribe area. You can also find a Delincia Snow Hunter spawn here as well. As you can see, there's one on me right now that is very, very unhappy. And this little location is just literally... It's got a little road up to it, and it's just there on the map. And another place you can find a Delincia Snow Hunter is actually in the Forgotten Tribe area. So this is anywhere in this camp right here. She often actually makes rounds, so she'll go around this kind of area with the bridges. She'll go bridge uh, to bridge in a big circuit, as you can see there's a circuit around the middle. And that's usually how I find her as well, she can be spawning around here. You can also get some area berserkers doing this also. My next on the list of some people's surprises will be Janos. And this is Janos, he is awesome, he is part of the highs of the North Clan which are the highest levelers in strength in the actual game out of all the factions. He's strength, uh, agility and vit, which is very, very nice. The health pool is a little bit lower than the rest. Find him in the highlands, easy to find. Um, 
I need some very solid thrall that will do a heck of a lot of damage. The same goes for my next one, which is Leon. He is amazing also. You can find him every time at his own watch post. Again, a little bit lower HP than the rest, but his damage really makes up for it, I promise you. Um, again, these two are one of the best ones for damage on the list. Um, they kill their targets very, very quickly. Now, where can you find Leon? Well, Leon is actually extremely easy to find. Now, this is because this dude literally has his own house on the map. <laughs> it's called Leon Watch. It is in a very obvious area, just near the watery bridge there, you can see in the highlands. And Leon will always, always be here because he's got to look after his watch post. He will usually spawn right here. You can see him, the bold looking highland man. He is quite vicious, so be careful with him um, when you're knocking him out. <laughs> now, Janos is a little bit more tricky to find, but you can usually find him spawning around the camps around the place. Although one of the places I find him quite a lot is he likes to walk this little path right next to this little house right here, which is called Stormwatch. He likes to hang around there quite a bit. So any of these camps around here, he will tend to uh, be at usually, but I just find him quite a lot frequently at Stormwatch. So this is where you can find Janos if you're looking for Janos. My next is Eri the Ravager. He's a Volteris of Skelos Thrall. He is also amazing. The good thing about Volteris of Skelos Thralls is they have quite high HP to start off with. And their actual attributes go into every single slot, so they will level pretty nicely actually. They have pretty high strength and vit and survival, which is also nice because it will reduce the uh, poison time stats that are on your actual thrall if it goes in there. So this is also a great nice varied thrall that I really like and it's not too difficult to find either. Next one I'm going to talk about is Spinus the Marauder. He is an absolute unit. I would argue he's pretty darn good. Probably one of my favourites in this list as well. He is from Volteris again. Nice high base HP, level same as the other Volteris, but he's just a really nice one to have. If you can get your hands on a Spinus the Marauder, then you will be absolutely golden. My next is Dacius the Sharp. He is very, very awesome for all, again. He is also a Volteris of Skelos uh, for all. Nice high base HP, nice damage, you know, uh, fits into all the areas, quite high armor as well. These guys are just good all around if you can get any of the Volteris of Skelos. Uh, T4 thralls, uh, it's just awesome. And my last on the list is Kithis the Flesh Terror. I probably absolutely murdered his name, but again, he is very, very good thrall. So, again, Volteris of Skelos, amazing base HP. You're gonna notice a trend with the Volteris of Skelos, but they truly are very, very good thralls. So, very worth farming any of those, and then you have the rest of the list. And you can find these in the normal world, um, you don't have to wait for a purge for them, so you can find them quite easily. If you are not wanting to go too far north, I would probably stick with the Relic Hunter Treasure Seeker. Undead City, um, you know, you can get them done pretty nicely. And then you have the uh, Dazzlina and uh, Sumerian Berserker, also very nice. Now any of the Volteris of Skelos thralls can be actually found in the well. So this is the Volteris Skelos well. Any of the actual spawners with fighters in them, um, this is where a one of these couldn't spawn. So for example, we have the Flesh Terror in this spawn currently. But I've been around killing through these spawns, see what I get, and uh, you know, uh, you get lots of different combinations of stuff. So you're gonna need some nice hot armor to spend some time here. And here's another example, we've got Airy the Ravager that is literally just spawned here. Um, you can find them on the bottom, on the top, you can find them everywhere. Um, I do find usually I get better ones on the top, but you never know, you can get lucky and find one of these great guys uh, on the bottom. And do be careful because they really hurt. Um, one of the most nasty things about these guys is they're actually spear welders, so... Um, they're very good with the spear, so they can be quite a pain in the arse to tame because the spear has nasty reach when you're using it. And what I mean by the top spawner is there's two spawners for two guys, one for an archer and one for a fighter. Uh, at the moment we have Tamar the Slivering there and a normal fighter, but you can get pretty good uh, spawns here as well. Uh, right next to the recipes, so there you go, for example. 
going to give you an example of why I think these thralls should be taken into consideration for your army or whatever. I have put together a small test that I have run numerous times. This time we're running it with dragon bone weapons and our base subject is going to be a Kushuk fighter uh, level 3, so it's a dog fighter from the Dogs of the Desert clan. And that's what we are basing this off. He's going to be the base of attack speed. And they're going to be fighting uh, a treasure seeker boss from the undead uh, city. All of them will be equipped with champion's armor and they will have all the same weapon at a time. They have champions to negate all of the uh, different effects so it's not unfair results if they get bled or something. But first we're going to start off with them all. Another quick notice as well, I do not recommend at all to switch types of uh, weapon too frequently. So for example what I mean here is you see Leon, Leon naturally has a hardened steel war axe when you get him. I would not recommend going out of any other weapon type than that. Something that still happens today might happen to you and I've had it a ton throughout researching this has been an absolute pain in the ass. And if you've ever wondered why uh, for all stop attacking, it's because of this. If you give them something too different from what they're used to, uh, stuff like that, it messes them up and they will just stop attacking. Um, they will just stand and look at your target and just follow you around like a brain dead for all. So that's why uh, it's always recommended to give the fool that you have the class of weapon that it naturally has come with. So. Uh, you can give it something different, but I don't entirely recommend it because you might make your full brain dead. So, um, since it's not fixed so far, that's my recommendation. So don't do what I'm doing uh, and testing all of these things with uh, different weapon types because I have to kill off some of these sometimes so they can actually start fighting again <laughs> because they've messed up, which is really sad. Another thing also, these fighters will be timed as soon as they hit the target. So as soon as they hit the target, that's when the timer starts all the way until the killing blow. And it's been tested several times. So we have an accurate seconds on the clock. So pretty much I'm going to time the first one with you. This will be with our basic boy. Um, and let me grab it, otherwise it would take a little bit too long of a video to get all of them and just test all of them in front of you. I always have to switch between my timer and what I'm spawning in. So we're going to use the Relic Hunter Treasure Seeker boss number one. I'm going to wait until I hear him slash. So here we go. Start the timer right now because I've just heard that he smashed him and seen on my screen under my inventory that he smashed them as well so they don't have any food by the way in this testing experience i didn't want them to heal or anything i just wanted the uh, results to be as accurate as possible and i've picked a boss that is uh you know in between uh he's doing pretty well with his little thing he's not living very well though poor guy luckily we have another 10 people to go through but there we go and he killed that within about 57 seconds. That's how long it took our little fighter to do it. Uh, drag a bone more, you can see, there you go. Uh, good sundering weapon, armor pen. And that's how long it took him. And then I'm going to be doing the exact same process with everybody else and timing them. I just quickly want to add before I go through the results as well, this is what I mean when you give a throw a weapon that they can't exactly work with. So you have Lee in here, I've given him them all and straight away he's bugged out with his first selection and he's just gonna follow him he's not gonna do anything else that's what he's gonna do even if he gets attacked he will do the same thing so i'm gonna try and get a new leon out because he's he's pretty much screwed <laughs> he's he's very uh, screwed indeed so we're gonna break the bond with leon there we go sorry you gotta go leon uh i need a new leon <laughs> And we'll see if this guy works any better. Because this is just what happens with this testing. Um, you get them something too different, they will stop working entirely. And that will be your thrall going bye bye. You know, that kind of thing. But there we go, we got him a new maul. Um, I'm going to put him in the pen. See if he takes to killing this guy this time. And I'm going to quickly get ready to time it. There we go, he started working again, finally. <laughs> So we're going to start with our base, the Kushite Fighter 3, and this is pretty much the lowest statistics out of all of them, as it should be. 
the Dragon Maw, he scored 57 seconds to kill the target. On the Dragon Sword, it took him 2 minutes 31 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Great Sword, it took him 57 seconds to kill it. With the Dragon War Axe, it took him a full 2 minutes 39 seconds to kill it. With the Dragon Spear, it took him 1 minute 34 seconds to kill the target. And with the Dragon Dagger, it took him 1 minute and 4 seconds to kill the target. Moving on to Leon's score. With the Dragon Maw, it took him 33 seconds to kill the target. The Dragon Sword, it took him 34 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Great Sword, it took him 29 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon War Axe, it took him 31 seconds. The Dragon Spirit took him 40 seconds. And with the Dragon Daggers, it took him 46 seconds to kill the target. Moving on to Janos with quite a similar score. With the Dragon Maw, it took him 25 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Sword, it took him 35 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Great Sword, it took him 22 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon War Axe, it took him 28 seconds to kill it. With the Dragon Spirit, it took him 39 seconds to kill the target. And with the Dragon Daggers, it took him 45 seconds to kill it. Moving on to Delincia Snow Hunter. Starting off with the Dragon Maul again, that's 31 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Sword, it took her 32 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Great Sword, it took her 24 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon War Axe, it took her 35 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Spear, it took her 40 seconds to kill the target. And with the Dragon Dagger, it took her 52 seconds to kill the target. Moving on to the Sumerian Berserker. With the Dragon Maw, it took him 28 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Sword, it took him 38 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Great Sword, it took him 20 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon War Axe, it took him 29 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Spirit, it took him 55 seconds to kill the target. With the Dragon Dagger, it took him 49 seconds to kill the target. For the Relic Hunter Treasure Seeker, it took for the Dragon Maw 20 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Sword, it took 51 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Great Sword, it took 25 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon War Axe, it took 1 minute 4 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Spear, it took 47 seconds to kill the target. And for the Dragon Dagger, it took 54 seconds to kill the target. Moving on to Eri the Ravager. For the Dragon Maw, it took him 23 seconds to kill the target. The Dragon Sword, it took him 32 seconds to kill the target. The Dragon Great Sword took 27 seconds to kill the target. The Dragon War Axe, it took 29 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Spear, it took 32 seconds to kill the target. And for the Dragon Daggers, it took 35 seconds to kill the target. Moving on to Spinners, the Marauder. For the Dragon Maw, it took him 18 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Sword, it took him 40 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Great Sword, it took him 25 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon War Axe, it took him 25 seconds to kill the target. The Dragon Spirit took him 30 seconds to kill the target. And when the Dragon Dagger took him 31 seconds to kill the target. Now for Dacius the Shark, starting off with the Dragon Mole. It took him 18 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Sword, it took 33 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Great Sword, it took him 30 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon War Axe, it also took him 30 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Spirit, it took him 36 seconds to kill the target. And for the Dragon Daggers, it took him 34 seconds to kill the target. Last but not least, we have Kiss This the Flesh Terror. For the Dragon War, it took him 21 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Sword, it took him 33 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Great Sword, it took him 28 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon War Axe, it took him 27 seconds to kill the target. For the Dragon Spirit, it took him 33 seconds to kill the target. And for the Dragon Daggers, it took him 37 seconds to kill the target. And that is all the numbers rounded up into one area. So I was quite impressed with these results, and as you know in battle, sometimes every second counts with these kind of things. So the lower the seconds, the better the thing. You know how it goes. And some of the results are quite surprising for what they are, but I think they're brilliant. Um, I think it's a really good selection of frills. Let me know what your favourite frills are and why. And these are my selection of strongest frills that you can find without the purge around the map. But anyway, that will be all for today. Thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!